thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Pedro Meira Monteiro. I'm a professor at the Spanish and Portuguese department, and I'm also the acting director of uh, the program in Latin American Studies here at Princeton. It's my um, pleasure to open this uh, much anticipated event to welcome our distinguished guests to Princeton and uh, to invite them to join our own faculty in this discussion around Eduardo Coutinho and his cinema. Bruno Carvalho and I have uh, put this together with the help of students, colleagues, staff members and academic units and uh, we will acknowledge their invaluable help in a minute. The two of us will moderate the two panels that will follow the film screening of Carlos Nader's Eduardo Coutinho, 7 de Outubro. You have the program with you. We, we all know how difficult it is to determine the beginning of a conversation. As I've learned in my years at Princeton, in a dialogue with some of the people in this room, the web that contains all the threads of a conversation is potentially infinite. When does a conversation really begin? Is it, isn't it true that what is being said contains the memories and words of people we never met? The beginning and the end, or o fim e o princípio, in Coutinho's words, are often arbitrary points that frame our conversation. As a cultural theorist once put it, and I quote, research does not begin at the point of contact. But if it doesn't, then we should be allowed to ask, when does a conversation start? When does researching the other has become possible? Following my own recollections, I may have started to think more seriously about Eduardo Coutinho in conversations with Argentinian filmmaker Andres Di Tela, who was also the director of our Princeton Documentary Festival, created by Ricardo Piglia, when I had just arrived in Princeton. It was in the context of the Documentary Festival that I first met João Moreira Salles, Sandra Cogut, and some of you know how much Sandra owes to this festival. I will not be the one to tell the story. Um, Carlinhos Nader himself, and uh, many other Latin American filmmakers and critics. I remember that at that point, Andres Di Tela was fascinated by how much Coutinho's characters would open up in front of a camera. Later, I would learn with Jean Salis just how much those ties that connect Coutinho to his subjects cannot be reduced to some mysterious empathy. Of course, empathy is the condition without which conversation would not, not even exist. Or perhaps empathy is just the precondition for listening a category that I learned to care about by talking to, hearing, and reading psychoanalysts. For my, part, for my part, meanwhile, I'm a teacher, and this puts me in the awkward position of a person who is being paid to talk, though I'm not always paid to listen. But this is not just a personal story. Even though, on those days, when I arrived at Princeton, the presence of the I in documentary making was a hot topic. El yo y el documental, not the eye and the documentary, as we would hear Andres Di Tela say. But am I talking about myself at all? Can I do it without conjuring up a number of people alive and dead alike? This is perhaps the magic aspect of Coutinho's cinema. It may start from a beginning that can hardly be set with clarity. When does empathy start to work? And why? I insist, stubborn as I am, that there is some mystery here. If the cultural theorist is right to say that research does not begin at the, at the point of contact, 
It is no less true that Coutinho's deep wish to listen is actually the very beginning of whatever we will be able to see when we open our eyes in front of a screen. In other words, our eyes will have been opened because in the beginning there was listening. And that is not simply a magical, mysterious starting point, but a political and ethical one. Someone shows up and chooses <coughs> to listen. Coutinho's camera is driven by a programmatic desire to see people opening up. To open up, I've learned in a dictionary, and I quote, means make available or more widely known become more communicative or confiding, make one's mind or heart more receptive or sympathetic, and finally, and that's the one I like the most, make someone vulnerable too. If there's no mystery in, that, in the documentary maker's activity, it seems to me that it can take, it can take on a mysterious, perhaps religious tone a religious tone Coutinho himself would refuse vigorously. To become vulnerable means that you have surrendered to the conversation, you have plunged into it, not knowing where it will take you. I may be wrong, but this must be a leap of faith. Or perhaps only the faithful believe in a first moment, which is the dawn of all conversations the starting point of talking. It is true that we don't know where this point is. We may not know if it exists. We may be alarmed by its existence. But something has started, and something will be seen because someone has simply decided to listen. Thank you, and Bruno. Thank you particularly to those who came from far away. I know a lot of you traveled to Brazil, not without weather-related drama. So it's just wonderful to have all of you under this roof. I'll spell out some uh, thank yous. The sponsors the um, at Princeton, the Race and Citizenship in the Americas Network, the program in Latin American Studies. We have the co-sponsorship uh, from the Department of Spanish and Portuguese Languages and Cultures, the program in Media and Modernity. Mm -hmm. We had graduate students who were just fantastic at helping us to make this happen. Uh, Jonathan Aguirre, Mauricio Acuña, Somnia Ramatan, Thomas Matuziak, Marina Bedran, Flora Thompson Devo. Thank you all very much. Thank you to the Unimitable Plus team, Rose Rivera and Ada Tanner. Very, very specially to Damaris Zayas, who's just been really, really fantastic. Um, I'm credited as co-organizer, but really Pedro has been the mentor and the motor of this event, so we all owe him our deep gratitude as well. Um, to, to some in this room, Coaching might be an unknown or relatively unknown quantity, in which case I envy what you look have to look forward to. To others in this room, Coaching was a friend, collaborator, an influence or a presence in the classroom, an object of study even, a way of being in contact with the world, with the worlds of others. Coutinho's work offers many entryways, as Pedro's introduction wonderfully suggests, and this will become clearer as the afternoon advances. But it might be worth reflecting on um, very quickly what it means that this event is organized under the auspices of the Race and Citizenship in the Americas Network, not self-evident um, or central concerns of the filmmaker. Albeit unwittingly, this institutional context may remind us of who Coutinho listened to and conferred visibility upon in his over 20 films. Often the downtrodden, the illiterate, prostitutes, widows, weirdos, favela residents, peasants, etc. But more importantly, on screen, people are never just that, or even ever primarily those things. 
Coutinho's characters appear to us as storytellers, performers, bodies secreting ideas, often proud, dignified, sometimes manipulative, pathetic, always inspiringly or disconcertingly human. Coutinho had a gifted ear for stories that had a need of being told and became a master of questions that didn't predictably lead to set opinions, as interviews might, but that took chances, that gained form in dialogues structured more openly as conversations, as exchanges, as encounters. So here we are, over one year after his unexpected death, in an encounter that celebrates listening and seeing in Coutinho's films, among filmmakers, scholars, students, and colleagues who, after all, listened to him and made make his work visible. Coutinho's films refrained from making overarching claims on social realities. The realness he screens tends to consist of the realities of encounters between individuals and film crew as captured by a camera. In Carlos Nader's Eduardo Coutinho, 7 de outubro, October 7, which we are about to see, we have an encounter between two filmmakers that greatly admired each other, and we are lucky to have one of them with us. Coutinho is now on the other side of the equation, as he is here in October 7, filmed rather than filming, mostly speaking rather than listening. But we have him, thanks to Carlos Nader and everyone responsible for the film we are about to see, where it seems as if he most belongs. Cinema. Cinema. 